Hi and welcome to this week's LEGO Technic video. What I'm going to be presenting today is my latest design for a two-speed automatic gearbox. Now the idea for this gearbox came about from the issues I had with another design that I presented a couple of weeks ago. Uh, this is a design for a, a kind of a compact two-speed automatic gearbox. Now the issue I found with this particular design is that even though it's nice and compact, um, there's an issue where when you transition between the gears like this we were loading the output and we're switching there's a point at which the load on the output uh, balances the pullback from the rubber band uh, that switches the gears and you find there's a state there where it just kind of crunches the gears and that is something uh, that motivated me for this particular design is trying to solve that issue okay so i'll just show you this gearbox in action let's turn it on you can see the output there is rotating slowly as I load the output, it'll switch to a lower gear. As you can see there, with the switching mechanism rotating, now you'll find that no matter what loading I put on the output, uh, there is no issue with that transition point. So there's no transition or switching transition point where you kind of get that crunching effect or lose traction. So the way I went about designing this gearbox was to imagine having a differential like this always being driven, for example, on one side by a speed of 1. And then the red axle is the uh, represents the two gears that we're switching between. So for example, the red axle might switch between a speed of 0, so that would give us an output on the yellow axle of an average of 0 and 1, which is a half. And then when we switch gears, um, it might go to speed 1, and that would give us an average of the output of 1 as well. So that means the output switches between a half and one. Now the issue that we're trying to solve is that if the red axle during that switching process um, is no longer connected, is disengaged, that uh, of course what happens if you disengage that red axle, that if there's loading on the output and um, the, uh, it's being driven by the right axle, then the red axle will just spin. So what we needed is some way of being able to drive this axle in this direction, but it can't be driven in that direction. And that would solve the issue because that, what that means is when this is disengaged uh, and the axle can't be driven in this direction that would mean that the yellow axle would still have to spin regardless of the disengagement of the red axle. So how do you get an axle that can be driven in one direction but not the other? Well here's one example of how you can do it. Uh, I came across this particular design on the Eurobricks uh, forum and someone demonstrated this particular mechanism which was a really fascinating mechanism. And what this allows you to do, you can spin this side, and you can see the red axle starts to turn. Uh, but mysteriously, uh, you can't turn this side. If you try to turn the red axle, it, it just jams. Like you can push it hard enough and make it click, but uh, it doesn't actually uh, rotate. So it rotates easily in this direction. You can turn that one, but you can't turn that one. So obviously if you stick this together with my other guy, then clearly if we rotate the black axle and use that to drive the different gears then uh, the red axles uh, can go in from left to right but can't go from right to left and that was exactly the solution I needed for my gearbox. Now I spent a while trying to figure out how this particular mechanism worked, why you can drive it in one direction and not the other and during that process of trying to work out why this could uh, is like this I kind of figured that well for some reason it's probably because of this long path uh, that we're taking uh, from one side to the other. So it's sort of a complicated uh, gearing mechanism. We've got bevel gears going around corners. We've got um, you know, the large gears driving small ones. But after playing around with this mechanism for a while, I actually discovered a much uh, smaller version. Um, you can actually arrange a differential like this. And again, you can easily drive uh, this axle here. You can obviously drive that axle there. But again, for some reason, you, you cannot drive the red axle. It's, uh, it's pretty much completely jammed uh, and this is in fact the exact uh, mechanism I used in my gearbox so again I could drive from this side uh, but not from this side and... all right so just go through the details of the design of this gearbox so on the right side here we have got the output that output uh, has got a differential that measures the uh, loading difference between the input and output on that differential so as we load up the output we can see that differential reacting and rotating the axle that drives the uh, switching mechanism over here and that switches either between a neutral location or a, sp a speed uh, then that 
goes through the magical jamming differential on this side. Uh, so as we engage that second gear, that starts rotating, and that then rotation moves into the summing differential like I talked about before, that's being permanently driven by one side. But as we engage the second speed, it uh, drives the left side to give the overall output over, over here. Uh, so that is the explanation for the two-speed automatic gearbox. Uh, I hope you got something out of it and enjoyed this video. And if you'd like to support this channel, please like and subscribe. We'll uh, see you next time. Thanks for watching.